Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Martin Czech. I'm working with um, Garrett Forge, and uh, today I would like to show you the work we've done uh, for the pull replication plugin. Uh, so, so that's the agenda. Uh, uh, so I would like to give you the high-level overview of the replication plugin and the uh, pull replication as well. And then mm, to show you how the pull replication works, uh, I would like to show you the configuration. That's the easiest way to uh, to describe how all the bits works together. Uh, then I will do some short live demo. At the end, I would do some benchmarking. And last but not least, uh, the questions. Mm, so please feel free to send the questions during the talk, but I would like to answer them at the end. Okay, uh, so that's the very, very high level overview of a replication plugin. Uh, and I I'm also gonna um, uh, uh, describe why I'm putting this push in front of the name of the existing replication plugin. So currently, when users are doing uh, some changes, so they're pushing some code, they're creating a patch set, they're uh, uh, putting some comments or voting, uh, uh, replication plugin is uh, it's, uh, batching those changes using the replication delay. Uh, so uh, all the changes for a single uh, projects are going to be put into a single uh, batch, and then uh, application plugin is going to use the pure Git push protocol to push data to remote destinations. And because we are using uh, uh, G uh, pure Git, uh, those destinations uh, can be uh, doesn't have to be a Garrett instance; it can be any Git daemon. And that's why I'm also referring to push because the replication plugin is based on the uh, push protocol, on the push command. And so, and the replication plugin is uh, uh, with us for, for years. Uh, many companies is using it and it generally works really well. But there is, I, there is some, I wouldn't call it an issue, but there is some design of the, of the push protocol which, some, uh, which can make things uh, slow. So, Imagine that you are doing a single push of a single, uh, so you're doing a push of a single ref. Then the server is uh, is replying to the client with the list of uh, all refs. That's something which is called ref advertisement. Uh, it's part of the negotiation phase. Look, I already mentioned uh, that for the large repositories, we can have a large a number of refs. So this list uh, goes like forever. And we also notice that uh, for large repositories, uh, this, can, this, this can take a significant, significant amount of time. Sometimes it's like the, the, like the 90 percent of the uh, operation is spent in this ref advertisement phase. Uh, so that's why we started thinking if we could use uh, the, uh, the git fetch uh, operation because thanks to git protocol v, uh, v2 the uh, the ref advertisement can be skipped for the fetch operation so this is going to speed up the things uh, uh, for uh, for the for the replication 10% of people said it takes around 1 second so 60% of the people say it takes between 30 seconds and 1 minute 20% says between 5 and 10 minutes, 5% 10 to 30 minutes, and 5% over 30 minutes. Okay, so uh, yeah, so as you can see, the, uh, the performance uh, uh, of the replication can be, can be signi uh, significant. That's why, with, uh, and as, as we said from our observations, so, so the times which are uh, significant are mo uh, usually uh, related to the ref advertisement. That's why we thought that uh, we can uh, we can uh, try to create a plugin which is going to use the fetch protocol. And basically, we came up with this idea of the pull replication. Uh, it, it's, that's again the high level overview. So when the users are creating a changes, now we are immediately notifying the remote destination. 
uh, note that there is a change, uh, there is a uh, chunk of data which needs to be fetched. We are doing that for now using the REST API. We are planning to enable other uh, ways like event broker or maybe SSH. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so th there's a change because now mm, the remote destinations uh, need to have a pull replication plugin installed. That's why it needs to be a great instance. But uh, but they're gonna use the Git patch, which, as we said, it's uh, it's it's not gonna do the ref advertisement anymore. Uh, yeah. So that's the high level um, overview, and let's go into the details how we can put the configuration to together. So the first comp uh, first uh, scenario I want to describe is the is a standard one when we have a primary uh, instance and few replicas. So in our case, we have one primary node and two replicas, and that's the configuration for primary node. We were we we're trying to make it as uh, similar as possible to the standard replication config because people already know it; they know uh, they feel comfortable with it, and uh, so yeah. So we were trying to mimic that. Um, in, in the primary node replication config, we have a new, uh, one new extra field, which is quite important. It's called instance label. Uh, this label is going to identify the node uh, in, uh, in basically in the pool replication. And then for every remote destination, we have a separate config file. And for that separate config file, we have um, another um, extra property, which is called API URL. Uh, that's basically the REST endpoint uh, where we're going to uh, uh, send our notifications that there is new data to fetch. Um, uh, on the other side, on the replica node, we have a configuration for the, pr uh, for the primary where the URL is important. So we're going to know from where to fetch. Uh, so let me just show you what's going to happen when we're going to have some change on the primary node. Let's say that someone uh, click plus, uh, just vote on a change. Uh, when someone votes on a change, the pull replication plugin is going to go through all the replication uh, configuration, uh, which have the uh, fetch property set. So when the first property is set uh, and the ref matches the, the, the filter, uh, it's going to call the API URL of that uh, configuration. Uh, and it's going to call with that, uh, basically, uh, with that um, payload. So it's going to do the post with the project name, and it's going to call the fetch uh, REST API. And that's going to be the uh, body of the, uh, of, the, of the call. So it's going to basically se uh, send the label, which is primary. So it's that one. It's going to say which ref we want to fetch. And it's gonna basically you can decide uh, the the, the uh, sender can decide if the call should be synchronous or asynchronous. So on the receiver side, which is in our case the replica node, uh, what's gonna happen that uh, that um, uh, the node is gonna parse that message, is gonna uh, is gonna read the label, and it's gonna try to match the label with the configuration. So as you can see, we have a configuration which is called primary. So it's going to use that label to find that config and it's going to call fetch from that URL. This name is going to be replaced with the foo and then it's going to fetch that ref. So that's how we are notifying uh, other nodes that there is a new data to fetch and that's how the fetch is going to be executed. So this is a simple primary replica scenario and to be honest the most is, is the, like the most popular scenario. But we have uh, another usage for uh, pull replication is a multi-site scenario. Multi-site, we have uh, multiple primary nodes which are talking to each other and they're also talking with replicas. Um, the config is very similar. The, uh, the, the only thing is that on each primary node, we also have a configuration for the second primary. So uh, if you're gonna see that that config matches the, the instance label on primary two, and vice versa. This uh, config matches, uh, sorry, this label matches this config on uh, primary two. Uh, so, uh, and replica remains the same, uh, but we have some 
additional uh, functionalities uh, for multi-site scenarios. So when you have, uh, in, in, in multi-site scenario with full replication, we are able to enable uh, read-write on uh, all uh, primary nodes. So this means that uh, we can end, uh, we can end that up in a split brain situation. And to avoid that, we have few mechanisms uh, which are related to multi-site and full replication. The split brain scenario means that, let's imagine that you have uh, two concurrent writes to the same ref on different nodes. So now without any protection, they're both gonna accept the write, they're gonna update the local repository and they're gonna try to replicate. And then mm, we're gonna end up in an inconsistent situation that we don't know what is the proper view of the repository which is shared among uh, multiple uh, primary nodes. So we have two mechanisms to avoid that. Mm, so multi-site is uh, doing a wrapper around the extension point exposed by full replication. And it's actually checking, uh, first is locking the ref. So whenever we have a um, change, we are locking that ref. So we are sure that only one node is writing. Uh, but the second scenario, uh, but, but it's still not enough because we can be in a uh, inconsistent in a split brain uh, scenario already, and we're gonna try to add more data on top of that. So to avoid that, we are also before uh, before doing the replication, uh, but before accepting the, the ref, we are also doing the check in the global RefDB if the if the local uh, SHA-1 of, of the uh, REF is the uh, is the proper one, the newest one. So in the global RefDB, we are keeping all the SHA-1s for all the REFs. So in that case, uh, we are able to enable the read-write uh, with the full replication on both. Okay. Okay, another cool feature, which we uh, developed uh, for the full replication, is so when we were working on pull replication, we noticed that for some refs are really small, and we were thinking we can avoid going uh, going the, doing those two calls. So first sending the REST API notification and then doing the fetch. So for small, uh, so we came with this idea that for small uh, refs, maybe we can send the content of the ref as a uh, as a REST API called payload. So uh, there's a uh, so by default uh, all the REFs which are smaller than 100 kilobytes that configurable you can change that um, are gonna be transferred that way. So instead of calling the fetch endpoint, uh, we're gonna call apply object, and that's the payload. It's similar to what you uh, what you saw before. So we have the the label which is which is pointing which is showing the source. We have the ref name and we have the content of that uh, of that ref. So we have the commit object, we have tree object, and the blobs. Uh, so in that way, we are able to to to. So the the receiver is going to parse that uh, content and it's going to write those da uh, this data directly to to the repository. It doesn't have to. It it can skip the fetch completely. And that, and we noticed that that is lightning fast. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's happening in milliseconds, basically. Okay, uh, another uh, another big part of the picture is how we can deploy the uh, the pull replication. Of course, we can deploy it in a, a standalone mode um, where we have just the uh, pull replication and um, and it works really well. It's it's very useful for uh, for primary replica scenario because there is one thing which I actually forgot. If I'm gonna show you the configuration again, uh, we have something which is called exclude refs. Mm -hmm. It's done. It's done. Uh, we need that property because for now the pull replication, you, uh, which is using the git fetch, can fetch only the let's call it proper refs. So the refs which are pointing to a commit. Uh, but in Garrett, we have some special refs like multi-site version or sequence number, which are not pointing to the uh, to the um, commit, they're just um, handling some value. Uh, 
uh, and those for now we are working it's on our pipeline we can we're gonna work on that but for now we cannot uh, we cannot um, fetch them so uh, that's why we are excluding those uh, those reps uh, so in standalone stand -alone mode but for example for replica they are not needed that much so the replica doesn't use them uh, and they're never read by the replica so we can safely skip them uh, mm, that, uh, that, that's why we have also the second scenario. And the second scenario is where you can actually put uh, the pull replication and the replication to work together. They can work, uh, they can be in the same system. And, and uh, the, the, all the reps which are cannot be uh, fetched uh, for now, they're going to be pushed by the replication plugin. So the, another useful thing is for example for the multi-site where you have two sites and to make things even more consistent you can uh, you can do the synchronous call uh, so this means that for example when someone is gonna vote on a change you can block the ui until all the uh, remote destination destination are not going to reply that they fetch the data so they're in sync uh, but but there is a of course it's a obvious question what to do with a slow node so when the node is uh, one node is slower we don't want to wait for example 10 seconds for a node to reply and block the ui for the user it's going to give a very bad experience uh, so we are recommending to put a really small timeout let's say half a second so if the node is not responding in half a second, we can just time out that one. Uh, but we want to make sure that the data is uh, is there. So the, the replication eventually is going to push the data there. So a replication plugin, it works like it, it doesn't know anything about the full replication. So it's doing in the background, it's doing all the pushes anyway. So that can uh, so in that mode, you can basically mix them. So let's imagine that we have two primary instances there on the bottom, and here we have one replica, and here I have just a um, Garrett repository. Okay, so let me go to the, uh, let me show you the configuration, each of them. All right, so that's the configuration of the primary one. So we have the instance label, we are excluding uh, this one ref, and actually mm, the replication and pull replication they can work together but they can be mixed so for example for the primary two we have a standard push configuration and we have a pull uh, 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 pull configuration as well but for the replica we are just doing pull so we are skipping the replication plugin we are just using pull replication that's it uh, Okay, so let me show you the second one. Second one is very similar to just the uh, instance label is different and we are pointing to uh, primary one. The replica is the same. And the replica is much simpler. Uh, we just have two, uh, uh, two remote configurations for uh, primary one and primary two because we have to know uh, uh, where where to fetch from basically so we have those two URLs and yeah let me show you how it works so I'm going to create a change which is uh, with a file which is uh, bigger than 100 kilobytes to simulate the fetch so we should see both fetch and apply Okay, so we call the fetch, that's the replica, that's the primary two. We call the fetch, and because we created the change, we also have the meta ref, and it was, uh, because it's very small, it was done by apply object, it took like seven milliseconds to, to replicate. Uh, so the replication passed. So now let's see if it works with the multi-site. So if I'm gonna go to the UI, I should see the change here. Yes, there is a pull replication demo. And I 
should see the second uh, on the on the, the the second primary node. So I see it as well. And then if I'm gonna do the change on the second primary node, let's vote. Okay, I will see that on primary one, uh, we call the apply object. It took two milliseconds to replicate, and also we see that on on the replica here. So yeah, so some benchmark. Um, I did a check on the grade repository, which is around 45,000 refs. So it's, it's a medium size repository. Mm, the push replication took around 10 seconds. The pull replication fetch uh, took uh, around 1.5 seconds. And for apply object, it was five milliseconds. And I was using, just, I was using, And uh, I was I was using the same uh, change uh, size, so basically it was around 10 kilobytes. So it was very small. Mm. And I think we have a lot of room for improvement here, uh, because if I'm going to use the pure uh, Git uh, client, uh, Cgit client, and I'm going to do the fetch of the ref, it takes around half a second. So we still have a bit of a uh, overhead here so uh, we have a few ideas how to improve it could the replica use a strip down fetch replicator instead a full-blown grid instance if i understand the question correctly if we can prepare some kind of a uh, fetch replicator yeah we can uh, of course it can be some kind of a small uh, small uh, basically program but we need to expose rest apis so. So it should be possible. Uh, okay, another question from Luca. Does replication delay make sense for poor replication? Uh, for the poor replication, at the moment, we are not using uh, the replication delay uh, because we are fetching um, basically, uh, so we notice that the fetching of the refs is so quick that we don't want to delay. So it's better to execute multiple fetch operations instead of one larger because it's uh, it's basically faster but yeah I think we still we can we still honor the the uh, the pull replication uh, sorry the the, um, the replication delay property just for now we are setting it to zero but I think it can be used in that way so in that way the fetch operation is going to fetch multiple refs at the same time how do you make sure that the patch set and their metadata are fetched together to prevent inconsistent uh, inconsistencies. Mm. Uh, at the moment, we are not doing that. I believe, uh, if if I remember correctly, we are uh, just fetching uh, them uh, separately. So, so yeah. At, at the moment, I think we are treating them as a separate fetches. So we are not doing. Uh, we are not checking that inconsistencies. Okay, another one. Uh, how pull replication plugin compares to the uh, to the way that uh, Google does replication? Uh, I can answer uh, this one unless there is uh, anyone else from Google that wants to answer. So the the way the pull replication has been designed is exactly in the way that Google does pull replication across sites, because um, actually even if the replication plugin has been there for many many years more than 10 years, Google never used that one and because it was just not effective and not performant and not suitable for their infrastructure. So the way that pull replication works is the way that Sean and Dave Horowitz explained to us how Google does replication. Uh, okay, the last question is, how is there uh, interaction with replication with the, with the pull and, and push uh, schedule at once so there are basically two independent plugins so they don't know anything uh, about each other so uh, the pull replication is gonna try uh, is gonna fetch so, uh, and the, the pull replication is uh is, is, it, it should in theory it should be way faster than push replication and especially with the with the delay uh with the replication delay uh, so um, Push uh, pull replication is going to fetch the data, but if anything goes wrong, if something I don't let's imagine that there was some connectivity issues or whatever, uh, the 
push an application is going to try to push that ref anyway. And uh, so, the, so the data are going to be transferred anyway. Um, and if, if everything works as expected, uh, because of the ref advertisement and the neg negotiation phase, actually push um, uh, push replication is gonna be uh, notify that the that this data is already transferred is already on the server side, so there is no need to do the push 